Look, you're an ultimate sales machine, right? You're not an ordinary person. If you want to be become an ultimate sales machine, that means you produce revenue, you close deals as and when you want, okay? You don't stumble upon a deal, right? You manufacture deals, right? You. So again, the topic of the day is how do you handle a no in cold calling in business in sales when you're closing somebody or in a personal life as well okay so we already discussed some parts i will not touch upon some part so we, we spoke about how to handle no on a cold call okay now stepping out of the cold call let's talk about the personal life okay how would you handle a no in a personal life okay Let's say you want to approach a girl, you want to take that girl on a date and the, you know you are approaching and you're saying, hey, look, you'd probably start with a compliment, okay? That's how usually guys do, okay? Look, you're beautiful, looking beautiful, I really admire what you're wearing, whatever it is, okay? You build a rapport, okay? And then you say, hey, look, uh, I wanted to ask you out, okay? Can we go out some sometime? Girl says no. You don't give up. You're a sales guy. You don't give up, okay? I say, hey, look, I understand, okay? Anybody that I spoke with in the past, people who I have uh, asked them out, you know, they always said no, okay. But after they spent some time with me, they know how genuine I am, how much I care for them. Now they're the best friend of mine, okay. Look, there's a best Chinese restaurant out there and I know you love Chinese. You did your homework as well. Look, I know you, you love Chinese. Let's just go out and it's all about food, okay. Just want to have food and, and that's about it. So try and learn to handle a no by acknowledging, agreeing, doing a little bit of homework and connecting it and connecting back to what they want or what is it that they love, okay? So it's not about you, okay? It's not about you want to go out with her or propose her. It's about them. What do they like? How would they feel if they go out with you, okay? So you're trying to sell yourself that you are the best, okay? People who have been with you in the past, they, they love you for how genuine and how caring you are, okay? So this is just, is just how to handle no in your personal life. All right, so the fundamental of sales remains same, okay? You, whether you're in sales or your business, you need to have art of closing somebody. Look, if you're not closing them on your idea, they're going to close you. Okay, so either way there is a sale which is going to happen, you know, either you're convincing them or they will convince you, right? So either you're taking that girl out on a date, going out on a Chinese day, you know, food uh, date, or she is closing you on not going. Okay, so either way sale is going to happen. So it's better be you, you being the sales guy, being persistent, knowing what you need to do to stay in the game and pursuing that, even if there's a no, salespeople don't give up. Okay, salespeople never give up, even if it is a no. So, coming back to the business world now, okay, so we already discussed on the first stream, which got disconnected, we discussed how to handle a no on a cold call. We discussed the fundamentals of cold call. Now, let's talk about that scenario when you're trying to close somebody, okay? Now, before we go there, it's highly, highly recommendable, highly, it's really important that you understand the buyer's need what they what they require so I, I was giving an example which unfortunately did not get recorded so the example is let's say I want to buy a car okay and I want I'm walking into a showroom okay and if the person says, hey what kind of car are you looking for I said I'm looking for an SUV okay great the person starts showing me the car okay here's the car here's the car here's the car here's the car okay that is one way of looking at it okay and then there is a sales professional okay who comes and approaches me let's say in different scenario I go to a different showroom the first okay so let's just stick you know, stick with the second scenario now okay so now i'm going to a second showroom i i walk into the same sh uh, you know, showroom and the person say what kind of car are you looking for sir i'm looking for an suv okay great i'm going to show you we have a lot of options okay may i know what is the reason why are you looking for a car today and why specifically an suv okay they said uh look i i have a car which is pretty small i'm looking for a big car now we have a family and i have like two kids we have Sometimes you go on a long trip and that's why I'm looking for an SUV. Okay, perfect. Great. 
Um, yeah, I understand. You know, it's 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 important to have a have a big car. Okay, so great. So I hope you guys are still with me and the line and the stream has not got disconnected. So the person is understanding my need. Okay, and um, then while he's showing everything, uh, then he decided. Okay, so you, you're looking for a car now. Okay, all of a sudden it's because you, know, you have a big family now, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Perfect. So now, now the, what what is the sales professional doing is trying to understand what is my purpose. Okay, everybody has a purpose, right? You don't go and go and buy a product or service just because you just need that. There has to be a different purpose. Everybody has to have a different purpose. I'm buying a house. I'm buying an insurance. Whatever I'm buying, I'm buying a market research data. There has to be a different purpose. I'm buying an IT software. There has to be a different purpose behind it. Okay, if I'm buying IT software. Maybe I want to make sure that the services are up and running. Maybe I want to improve on the speed of uh, you know my services. Maybe I want to buy it for disaster recovery. You know I don't want I want to have a backup data server. If it goes wrong, uh, I need to have a database in place. So everybody has a different need, right? And if you're a sales professional, you need to understand what the need is, why they are buying what they're buying, and why now? Okay, what happens if they don't buy? Right? In this case. If I asked him, okay, look, um, when do you want to buy the car? I said, I want to buy in probably this week. Uh, and what if the what if the delivery is not available in a week, right? So I want to probably ask him, hey, what what if you're not able to buy a car this week? Uh, oh man, then that will be a big problem. Next week we have a trip coming up, and I cannot go in a small cramped up car. I need to buy a big car. Okay. So now, what is the sales professional doing here, as compared to the first showroom? Right, first showroom, the person said, okay, you want a car? Okay, here are the cars. Okay. That person doesn't know my purpose. That person doesn't know my need, doesn't know my timing. Why am I doing what am I doing? Coming back to the same scenario, if you're in a deal, if you're in business deal, right, is before you close, if you reach to the closure, it is important for you to understand the need, right? Once you have understood, then you will be able to answer the objection pretty well. Okay, so now assuming you're, you're in the same scenario, okay, you're with the sales professional now, now you're you're at the stage where you have to take a decision. Person is you know salesperson is asking okay all right so you you want to you know is that something you want to go for right now? Uh, person says, no no not right now. Okay all right I understand. First he says oh I understand I completely no I understand no problem okay you can definitely take your decision when you want but can I ask you a question? He said okay yeah tell me. Look there are basically three reasons why anybody would not take a decision. Okay, may I ask you that? He said, yeah, what, what is it? Like, first is when the person, when, when they don't see a value benefit or they don't fully understand how the product or service is going to add value to them, that is when they don't say yes, okay, or don't take a decision. Number two is when sales rep has not built enough credibility about the product and service, about the company, that's when probably the decision doesn't happen. Or the third scenario is, when the, the 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 price is not affordable, it's you know the, the customer is not able uh, able to afford the price, or because of some of the terms, uh, the customer is not able to take a decision. Now, which one is it for you in this case, right? So, person will say, uh, well, um, probably I, I don't I don't I don't see you know a lot of value coming from it. Okay, great. Look, sir, I understand. Now, the reason why you are looking for a big car is because you wanted to have a big space. You wanted to have uh, in a car which can, uh, which will be really comfortable in a long journey, which has a good luggage space, and you know, for that matter of fact, it's a pride to have an SUV, right? It's a, it's a status symbol as well. And you imagine you sitting in the car and driving off, uh, a smooth ride, right? Now that's exactly what you're looking to buy. Now, this is something which is going to add value to you. Look, I can show you a bigger model as well. Here's the model, right? So probably what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build the value again, okay? I'm not trying to just talk about the benefits and features, but I want to connect the objection of known to what his goal was, what his purpose was when they were looking to buy a car. Now, same is applicable when you're in real estate. Same is applicable when you're in insurance. Same is applicable when you're selling market research, or IT products, anything you're selling, B2B or B2C, doesn't matter. Once you understand the, the purpose, you have to ask, you know, what are the what what exactly is the reason? The way you ask, this could be one of them, right? There are multiple ways of how you can handle that objection, okay? But there's just one of them. All right, so 
that's how you handle somebody from no to getting the objection knowing the real objection right no is just not an objection right no is just probably they don't want to take a decision so you need to find out what is the cause is it the is it the value is it the credibility is it me somebody i i do not do right or is it price or terms right and then when you're trying to close that try and build the value never reduce the price you can always move up in in your inventory right you can you can have a bigger products uh costlier products so what will happen is the product which you he is if he's insisting that the price is the challenge then if you show him the bigger product the probably the current product size pro, price will diminish the value or, or the price will not look so big right and then you know he all will you know and you might be surprised that the person will even go for a bigger product right people have affordability they can afford it just that probably they don't see value of that car for that it's it's not worth the price that that is given them right so that's how you handle the objection okay but the most important aspect is when there's a no it doesn't mean it is a no no means not now probably but you need to persist and insist and you should would should be able to get into the situation where the regular sales people will give up normal people will not go out of the way to find out the you know for real problem try and do the rebuttal right on an average you probably have to ask five times anybody before somebody closes a deal right you need to ask him five times for a closure and that's when you need a big arsenal of different types of pitches and closures right so here's my recommendation right if you've not done that already write down all the objection practice them rehearse them drill them right and and it should come out naturally when somebody is coming uh coming to you with the objection right it, you should not want to you don't want to be in situation when they say no and you go cold uh flunk okay you will flunk okay you need to have arsenal of closure absolutely i understand no problem i am with you i understand sir okay now let me ask you this right anybody uh, who doesn't take a decision it's basically because of three reasons may i share that with you yes 1 2 3 which one is it for you okay now follow me i want to show you something okay here's something i want to show you probably from the wrong product or services whatever you need to add more value to it okay but the point is you need to work you need to grind you need to rehearse you need to have an arsenal of different objection handling look you're an ultimate sales machine right you're not an ordinary person if you want to be become an ultimate sales machine that means you produce revenue you close deals as and when you want okay you don't stumble upon a deal right you manufacture deals right you that's why the name itself suggests you're an ultimate sales machine right you are a machine which produces sales in large quantity and not just one off you know just being lucky as i say even a blind squirrel can get a nut you are not a blind squirrel right you are an ultimate machine who produces more nuts all right murari how do we handle when our company is weak over competitors amazing question okay i love these kind of question how do you handle when your when our when your company is weak over competitors okay now here's what i do Okay if my company is weak first of all I don't sell myself the idea that my company is weak if I am not sold on on the idea that my company is strong that I would not be able to convince the other first you need to change your thinking about your company okay it could be weak okay but if your company is in existence and it's been around for few years definitely there is a value add which is coming from it otherwise the business would not you know would not sustain okay if you say weak in terms of offerings values you need to find some usps okay what are the usps right one of one of uh, i remember one of the conversation right one of the company that we were dealing with was massive okay probably five times than my company i need to sit down and identify what is it my usp right what do i bring to the table which is different than other players product and services more or less probably would be the same okay it just the probably that they have a bigger brand they have a lot of money for marketing media advertisement whatever more or less if the if the quality is the same there are other things that you can top that up with okay which is how you can build a value number one is you need to first understand your customers requirement why they need what they need and 
the one biggest differentiator is, which I can tell you right now is the service okay service would beat any competition okay you can add a lot of value to any deal when you put heart and soul into it when you completely care for that person you understand the person's pain you would understand okay what is it that I need to do or showcase that would help me win that business so I would the way I would tackle it is if I cannot control the product I cannot control the delivery I cannot control the the branding of the company what is it in my control I have my commitment I have the service attitude that I can control if I can convince the person that we are the company who is growing but at the same time we are the hungry company which is very flexible very agile and we will serve our customers like anything okay we, we, we really treat our customers like king and if I'm able to articulate that and then I give him a proposal listing down all those things hey look with this option you get so and so all right you get I don't know what your company is all about but if you can just tell me what what do you do uh, what is your product and service? Maybe I can give you a specific example. So, Murari, what what does your business do? And guys, if you have any other questions, if, if not necessarily related to objection handling or no, anything else you have, just type it in. Look, it's very good if you discuss this out. Everybody would get their you know, different thought, thinking gap. Okay, so you're in IT services, right? So, biggest challenge you're probably competing with all the big companies like Wipros and Infosys and all the big big players who are in IT service and if your company is small you definitely want to highlight that personalized effect okay you probably want to you know throw things um, in the discussion like hey look I was dealing with one of the customers and their client was one of the big big players in IT services and uh, the reason why they came to us is because so and so right they were dealing with the company who was very rigid because they were big they were big bullies big boys they came to us and thank god you know they they, they they tell me that thank god that we came to you murari your company because you guys the way you guys take care of us is unbelievable you guys are available 24 7 you're very flexible even if you have not paid you for some particular service you're trying to com accommodate that and and your service is equally good right so i don't see why we went to the big players and not came to you right so you you build up a story okay you put your personality in the deal in your discussion and you need to come out all guns blazing when it comes to hey look nobody can serve you the way i do okay i can challenge you and then share some references right people believe in people right if they have used some of somebody has used your services talk to those people say hey look I'm talking to one of the customers you know would you be open to talk to them connect them to those people okay and you got it right there's there, there are a few things which are not in your control the service is definitely in your control right that's how I won some of my deals okay when I was competing with one of the company uh, when I was when I was uh, Actually, recently two deals I closed. One was one was for forty six thousand, and one was the deal was around two hundred thousand for three years contract. Look, those are the big deals, and we were competing competing against more than five or six players in both the deals. And the only differentiator that I had is me, my soul, my service, and, and I highlighted how we are different than others. Of course, there are service you know our, our offerings as well, but more or less, if you go to see services of and all the IT services company is probably the same okay if the market research mostly probably you know probably you know 10 20 percent of variance but more or less is the same okay how you brand yourself how you position your company is what matters okay so I hope that answers your question Murari um, what else hey thank you Pralat for tuning in thank you for all the love share appreciate all the love that you're sharing please do share the stream this is our zone this is DG zone zone for ultimate sales machine do share and if you have any question do let me know I'm gonna take one or two more questions if you have any before we wrap it up hey I appreciate you know you are on the stream you know it clearly shows that that you are you are a winner and you have decided that you will become an ultimate sales machine if you're not already okay machine you need to produce sales in bigger quantities larger quantities that people think that you are a killer you're a killer okay that's where you want to be
Hey Sandeep, thank you for sharing the video. Means a lot, man. Thank you so much. Means a lot. Hey Kushal, thank you so much. Okay, I already answered your questions. I am glad that I did. I'm glad. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. Appreciate you spending time with me. This is your friend Dave Gudby. If you don't know who I am, I am the associate director and an ultimate hustler working with one of the market research companies, which is leading. And I'm gonna do anything to help people, okay? To help people. My goal is 10 million. And that is what motivates me every day, okay? I'm not here to make money, but I'm here to help people get rich because I realize I spend a lot of time being average, okay? Being an average salesperson, being an average husband, had an average physique. I've changed everything, okay? And I'm sure some of the things which I'm sharing, it would change your life as well.